thank you so much and welcome back for our second segment where, where, whereby we engage ourselves in an impactful conversation. And like I told you earlier, or like I said earlier before I took a short break, was we are having a discussion on topic empowering women through financial literacy. And in studio, I am joined by Aisha Omar next to me on my left side, the founder and director of Ishmar Halal Expo, as well as we have Hamisi Kiwaka, the CEO, or rather the managing director, Ishmar Halal Expo. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Walaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Glad to have you here today at Horizon TV. Feel at home. Thank you. Thank How you. are you feeling today, this ah. morning? Mashallah. Alhamdulillah. Mashallah. We, we, we are talking about empowering women through financial literacy. Again, we've talked about Ishmar Halal Expo. Maybe, let me start with you, Aisha. You are the founder, you are the director of Ishmar Halal Expo. What specifically is Ishmar Halal Expo all about? Okay, Assalamu Alaikum. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. Uh, basically, Ishmar Halal Traders Expo is a company that empowers SMEs, women and youth, through training, networking, and business training skills. Okay. Um, we are talking about financial literacy, and I understand this, that financial literacy is the ability to understand and effectively use various financial skills. And uh, somebody is called fi is financially literate when he or she is really smart, has a smart relationship with money. Somebody who can use money well has a good relationship with money. Maybe what specific financial literacy programs or workshop does the Ishmar Halal Expo provide uh, to women business, <coughs> to women in entrepreneurs? Okay, basically as Ishmar, we have our monthly uh, business training forums for women mm -hmm. and we train them on financial literacy, business ethic mm -hmm. and digital marketing. Mm -hmm. So the, for financial literacy, we train them on how to save on their daily basis and also if they are employed because you find so many vendors who are employed at the same time having a small businesses so that we can tell them on how to go to invest. Mm -hmm. Apart from the investment, they need to do shares. And uh, also we train them on uh, protecting their businesses by getting insurances. And also we, we engage them on how to get borrowings through Islamic Sharia compliant processes. Uh -huh. Okay, uh, maybe in what ways? We've talked about, you've talked about uh, training them. Mm. Let's talk about networking. Training is also about networking. Mm. As, as the founder, as the director, how does the expo facilitate networking opportunities for these uh, women in business? Okay, for us, we have our social media handles that we normally boost our page. Mm -hmm. So when the vendor participate in our programs, we normally, uh, one rule we normally do is we follow one another amongst ourselves. And also even they come to our social media on or any training programs or the expos that they normally attend, mm -hmm. they get networks through us because we don't normally wait for audience to come. We normally also do on a social media handle. That is why we find in all our, tra our expos we have free Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm. We go live and we start uh, marketing through uh, social media mm -hmm. and we also help them. They can get new vendors each time they come to our exhibitions. That is how they network. And also for us, we, we normally work hand in hand as an agent. Now for small SMEs, we help them. Let's say they call us, we have a contact center number. They call us, say we want uh, food, uh, hair oil, or let's say perfumes. So we refer them directly to our vendors. Okay. Yeah, that is why we, mo we find most of our vendors uh, supply even out of, out of Kenya. So does it mean like you guys have the contacts of those vendors uh, uh, under the Ishmar Halal Expo? Yes, we have our CRM system called High Level. So we have all our vendors' contacts, uh, email addresses, uh, where they have their shops, because we, we classify mm -hmm. this into three. We have uh, those micro, mm -hmm. uh, those are online businesses, mm -hmm. and then we have uh, the SMEs, now they have shops, and then the corporate. You find as Ishmar, we, with corporate, we normally become their agents. Mm -hmm. Like companies give us target. For, for them to participate in all our expos, they give us target and alhamdulillah, we have always achieved the target for us to, to achieve together, all of us. Okay, something uh, came up in my mind. I'll, I'll, I'll come back to that. Maybe mm -hmm. coming to you, Hamisi, yes. you are the managing director. Yes. Okay, maybe in what ways, when you talk about successful women in business, how do you guys identify or rather how does the expo uh, 
uh, in what ways does the expo highlight successful women entrepreneurs in this halal industry? Uh, thank you so much. Uh, this is a good question to mm -hmm. ask. Uh, basically, you know, we have so many challenges which are facing our Muslim women. Mm -hmm. Because first we have to go back to where the challenges are. Mm -hmm. and you know, the, the first challenge that we face is that most of our women, they don't get that opportunity uh, to do business, especially those who are married. Okay. You find that um, some of them, they, they're not even allowed to do business on their own. So as a Shmar, whenever we have our expos, mm -hmm. you know, we normally identify such cases. And through identification of the, such cases, we advise them and we also even um, identify mm -hmm. those women-related businesses where they, they can do without getting challenges from that aspect of um, segmentation when it comes to the aspect of being allowed to do their, mm -hmm. their businesses. Through that, we normally start the journey with this particular businesswoman from the startup stage until a certain level whereby this um, a woman is independent when it comes to her business. So through that, we get to uh, identify uh, those cases whereby, like we have some women who started business earlier, you know, we gave their stories, how they started, where they go about it, and through that, we, we, we venture into that, whenever we have our trainings, you know, we bring together these different cases whereby uh, at least these other women who like maybe they, 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 they are not ready to, you know, in business, mm -hmm. you must be ready to, to, to take risk. Yeah. There's that aspect of, uh, there's need of also identifying mm -hmm. what kind of business can you do so that you can actually uh, balance mm -hmm. with the capital that you have and the business that you are, you are starting. So through that kind of interaction and networking and bringing together different women with different kind of business, mm -hmm. that's when we, it's, it, it will, it's easier for us to exactly uh, identify. Uh, because success is not about uh, expansion of business. Yeah. It's about doing a business which, by the end of the day, there's that aspect of getting profit okay. and knowing how you can avoid some other uh, uh, illegal uh, uh, issues like mm -hmm. maybe uh, the aspect, you know, s sometimes mm -hmm. you find that when you, whenever you're doing business, like uh, there are things that you must know as a business person, not even women alone. Mm -hmm. Like you need to know that when you're doing a business, you should have a name, mm -hmm. you should have a logo of that particular business, you should have a brand of that particular business. How do you brand your business? So through that, that's when we, 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 we categorize mm -hmm. these particular people. As my colleague said, we have those who are micro, okay. we have those SMEs, and we have those corporates. So first you have to know, this woman, mm -hmm. does the business qualify to be a micro, or in the category of SME, or in the category of, of corporates? Okay. You've talked about uh, challenges, and challenges are something that you can never run away from. Maybe uh, as the founder director, mm. what are the challenges that you have encountered as the uh, director, as the leader of this Ishmar Halal Expo? And maybe what are the challenges we uh, do, the challenges these women face? Uh, okay, basically I find uh, so many women, uh, they have an eager to do business. Mm -hmm but they are denied chances from their marriages, from their families. Mm -hmm. So I normally tell my fellow women, that should not be the end of the world. You can always work on something. Okay. So if you are denied the opportunity and you're an entrepreneur, you can give that chance to somebody else, uh, but you need to work uh, hand in hand in line with uh, women entrepreneur businesses. Let's say like you are dealing with buyers, mm -hmm perfumes so you can employ somebody you can come in uh, you don't need to travel as I said mm -hmm. we have the networks uh, personally I have the networks in Dubai China Tanzania Zanzibar we just give you the connections to those suppliers mm -hmm. you pay and you employ somebody mm -hmm. and you stick to your marriage okay. it is that simple okay. uh, Hamis you've mentioned about uh, when when a woman wants to, to start a business he, he she must have uh, the logo the idea and everything. What if this person wants to start a business but don't know how? Now, that's why we are here. Mm -hmm. I think uh, the most important thing that we need to understand is that um, business is all about taking risk. Mm -hmm. So during our trainings, mm -hmm. we normally call them Women Business Forum. Okay. We normally invite all women, whether you're a vendor mm -hmm. or you're not a, a vendor. Okay. So whenever you come, 
we have experts who normally take through these women mm -hmm. how to come up with a logo. How do you come up with a name? Because sometimes you, just, you don't just start a business with any name. Mm -hmm. You need to come up with a name which is related with the product that you, you yeah. offer. Okay. You're getting me? Yeah. So through that, we, we get opportunity for them at least mm -hmm. to, 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 to come clear mm -hmm. and highlight their challenges that they have. Mm -hmm. If it's about where to get money, mm -hmm. Aisha is there. She's always there because we have financial institutions mm -hmm. that they can assist them get some small loans to start their businesses. If it's about logo, we have our social media manager mm -hmm. who works for that. Okay. She can do you a logo. Mm -hmm. She can do you a name of the business. Mm -hmm. She can even advise you the best uh, location for your business depending on the product that, that you have. Okay. Yep. Talking about financial support, you've talked about loans. You said Aisha is here. She can give loans to those w women who wants to to start business. Maybe, uh, how do you do it? And do you guys have a financial partnership? Do you do, do you do financial partnership? Yes, we with do. With institutions? Yeah. Yes, we do. Like uh, we, one thing I always uh, prefer with women, mm -hmm. before even you go to loans, we call women table banking. Okay. We we have introduced this last month. And we said women should meet, or like, let's say, once a month if they're coming to an expo. Mm -hmm. So the money doesn't, it rotates among us ourselves. Okay. So the money is kept on the table. And then everyone needs to contribute his shares. Mm -hmm. If, let's say, I'm giving 5,000 and giving 20,000, that money should be in the table. And then we divide it into two. We say one is short calls, uh, short loans, and the second one is long loan. Mm -hmm. Short loan is like you're taking money this month. If you're taking 15,000, then the next month you should return the 15,000. Mm -hmm. At least maybe you can do something, but the next month the money is being returned. Mm -hmm. And then the loan, loan is taking 100,000 and then paying like 8,000 every month. Mm -hmm. So without an interest. So it's an installment. It's an installment uh, every yeah. month okay. like you pay. Another option that we normally give is right now we are working hand in hand with KCB Bank okay. and they give loans to women, but they need to be uh, grouped now. Then those women are given money so that they can uh, and empower themselves in terms of uh, uh, bringing in new stocks to their businesses. Mm -hmm. You know, other than training, maybe, mm -hmm. if I look at uh, a research I did, I can see that uh, vendor vendors' packages. Yeah. Uh, okay. Maybe can you talk about it a bit, other than doing the training? Yeah, we normally have our packages and uh, we classify them into bronze. Bronze goes to corporate clients. Okay. And then we have the second category is uh, gold. Mm -hmm. So gold is for companies. And then the third one is called bronze. Those are for like SMEs now mm -hmm. who want to part on their own tables and they do not want to share. Mm -hmm. And then the last category is, is for those small SMEs, the micro now. Mm -hmm. They come in, we, we, we give them a chance that they can be able to share the tent and uh, brand their businesses. Okay. Is there any other project you guys are doing in the coastal region with the women? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Kindly elaborate a bit. Okay, basically, mm -hmm. you know, Ishmar is a big family. Mm -hmm. And uh, as my colleagues say, them, mm -hmm. uh, it's not about exhibitions, mm -hmm. it's not about expo. Mm -hmm. It's about the journey of empowering a woman has different perception, different perspectives. Okay. So the aspect of expo is just giving opportunity to our clients or our vendors to showcase their mm -hmm. products and get to, you know, get new clientele. Mm -hmm. But these trainings, basically, it's about equipping with these women with the new skills on how they can do their, yeah. their businesses. You know, businesses now has different dynamics. Yeah. The economy of our countries is developing each and every, every day. Yeah. Right now, we are moving to the cottage industry, whereby people are doing businesses at home. Mm -hmm. You're getting me? So with this, we are trying also to bring in partners mm -hmm. through local leadership, financial uh, institutions, and even well-wishers. Okay. Like sometimes, we normally conduct our exhibitions whereby the local leadership can sponsor the whole event and our vendors come without paying. Mm -hmm. So this is also one way of empowering them because they get equal opportunity to sell and market their products without even paying for those particular, particular events. Mm -hmm. 
So basically, uh, we started this journey in cost. Okay. And uh, this journey is all about ensuring that our women are going to be financially stable. And that's why we have like three financial institutions mm -hmm. that already we've signed MOU with them, mm -hmm. whereby our vendors, our women, our youth will be able to get loans starting January next year. Because sure. before you give loans to, to people, mm -hmm. you must have a probation of time whereby you have to gauge them. That's why through our participation in Expo, that's when we build that trust with our vendors. Mm -hmm. Like we have vendors that we started with them from exhibition, mm -hmm. first edition. Okay. So with this kind of uh, vendors, it is easy for us to, uh, to guarantee them so from those financial it means, institutions. It means like they are supposed to attend all the exhibitions. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, now because we are in the, in the 14th edition. 15th, 15th edition. We are heading to the 15th, 15th edition. Exactly. Okay. Um, something else. Uh, Aisha is here. Mm. She is a woman. You are a, you are a <laughs> Why Why women? You know, Why are men not in the picture? We normally, uh, you know, when you empower a woman, eh, mm -hmm. you empower the whole community. Okay. We have not disloaded men, but we normally also give chances to men one-on-one. -on -one. Mm -hmm. You know, men don't speak, like, you know, they don't talk, but once you meet mm -hmm. them one-on-one, -on -one, mm -hmm. they tell you a lot. Okay. So the, we, the reason as to why we are empowering these women, even the problems that we do, we only do for women, so that they can speak their challenges they are facing. You may find a... Um, uh, our most challenges of women is they do business and then it goes to in the verge of collapsing. Yeah. You know us, we are the same. Mm. You find you're given money by your husband and then you have a business. Sometimes you take money from the business, you put it <laughs> in the food. <laughs> Sometimes you mix <laughs> everything. <laughs> and then you, you find yourself mm -hmm. uh, within uh, a span of six months, mm -hmm. your business has collapsed. Okay. So that is why we are doing these training programs for women so mm -hmm. that, you know, when you empower a woman, the whole community is, is ready to go. Like they, they get... Uh, support from the women mm -hmm. and we, we have not left men also we have vendors who are men mm -hmm. but we normally engage them one on one yeah, we, I, as i told you we are an agent yeah. to all of them mm -hmm. so we also engage them one on one at least we know what their challenges but uh, you know um, women speak a lot okay. like they tell you their challenges men like hiding they, they don't tell you exactly mm -hmm. their challenges is unless you you push them to the wall so that they can tell you exactly what I trust I wanted to add something okay, on that. Eh? Uh -huh. Sorry for that. Eh? Mm -hmm. uh, basically, okay, I'm a man and mm -hmm. I'm, a, I'm representing the other men <laughs> in the Republic of Kenya and the world at large. Eh? Mm -hmm. But basically, honestly speaking, at the aspect of uh, Muslim community, mm -hmm. there is high rate of divorce. Mm -hmm. You find that women have a lot of burden, yeah. especially when divorce comes. Okay. And we have many, many examples, living examples of this kind. Mm -hmm. So as a company, we are taking that advantage. There's a gap, you know. Yeah. You know, they have a lot of, nowadays women have a lot of responsibility. Mm -hmm. Even if you go to a meeting in a school, you find that 95% are women attending the meetings. Mm -hmm. So men are not there. So let me, I'm calling upon uh, my colleagues in, 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 in the fraternity of, of men. Mm -hmm. We need to wake up. Mm -hmm. We need to realize that we, are, we have a lot of responsibility in our families mm -hmm. because it's like we are neglecting our own responsibility. Mm -hmm. So as Ishmar, mm -hmm. we are not neglecting the men at, uh, uh, okay. in that way. Okay. We are just trying to look how best okay. can we empower families. Okay. You know, family, uh, women are the managers of the, mm -hmm. of the families. So for instance, when you have vendors, because you have uh, about 30% of our vendors are men. Mm -hmm. So whenever we have our programs, we encourage those vendors to invite either their sisters, their wives. So in, in this way, we're also trying to convince these men mm -hmm. to give equal chance to their wife to do what? Business. Mm -hmm. Instead of him coming to an expo from morning to evening, mm -hmm. the wife can come and they can go and do something else which can add their, their income because we need to have that. So it's a, it's a support, support system. Support system. Support system, okay. exactly, okay. exactly, exactly. That's nice. Okay, so I wish we, we had uh, an experienced person, like for example, somebody who has benefited from this, this expo. Mm. But maybe on your end, I trust you have the full information. That's like, can you give us the statistics or rather the number of women who have benefited through this program, the Ishmar Halal Expo? 
basically, uh, Ishmar, we know we started it in Malindi. Mm -hmm. So as Amicia said, we started with vendors who didn't have logos, who didn't have name, mm -hmm. who didn't know even how to start their businesses. And Alhamdulillah, we have tried to help them. We have nurtured them. And uh, right now, some are even having shops, from micro to shops. And they have really enjoyed our services because we normally check up on them. We also check on their social media handle, their da database or their dashboards. And we also train them on what time you should post. Mm -hmm. So this journey has been a successful to those who have started with us. Okay. And they have gotten fruits from us. Mm -hmm. And they have grown such that they have networks, let's say like Malindi vendors who are selling foods. They supply cookies, snacks to Nairobi. So, like, do we still have do you still have a uh, registration process ongoing? Yes, 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 yes. yes, yes. Okay. yes. Maybe uh, we're talking about the success. I did mm. knowing the success women in business and everything. Maybe uh, how do you guys measure the impact of these financial literacy programs? Uh, you know, basically, mm -hmm. um, the aspect here is about uh, understanding mm -hmm. how finance is all about. Because uh, when you talk about measuring the success of financial literacy, mm -hmm. it's whereby we have a vendor who could not even know how to differentiate mm -hmm. between profit and loss. Now these vendors has a grown to a stage whereby she is now a corporate vendor, whereby she is having some financial sta stability, whereby she can even uh, go abroad mm -hmm. for, for, for bulky, uh, you know, uh, goods. For instance, my partner was in Dubai uh, two months back. Okay. And you know, some of the vendors equally gave her money so that they can have those bulky, like the bui buis, yeah. the old and all that. Mm -hmm. So it's, a, it, it, it's an aspect of a journey whereby we had a vendor who had nothing. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes we have cases whereby somebody can say that I have 15,000. Mm -hmm. Which kind of business can I start? Can I do? So for us as Ishma, we have to understand where does this person live? Okay. What the challenges do you have maybe? Like in your family setup, okay. how many kids do you have? Are you married or not? Are you divorced? Because you can st maybe you can start a business of like maybe baking. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have that business ethical in a way, you may end up consuming all the cakes at home instead of selling them to the to the clients. Mm -hmm. So these are the things that we, we, we are talking about. The issue of finance is about this person who maybe had a small uh, uh, capital to start a business of like maybe 5,000. Mm -hmm. Now she's handling hundreds of thousand. Mm -hmm. That is where we normally measure our, our, our impact of literacy. I think, I think literacy. Uh, you've really answered my question about uh, the resources that are available. You've talked about loan, you've talked about trainings, you've talked about giving them ideas and everything, you know. Maybe to ask this, uh, this other question, um, accessibility, let's talk about accessibility. How do you ensure that this program, um, uh, the Expo, uh, ensure that its financial literacy content reaches many, many people? many uh, many women from diverse backgrounds because when you talk about halal businesses halal yes. industry yeah. maybe a person might think that because you're talking about halal this means that it's a certain religion that should be here mm -hmm. can you maybe talk about that how accessibility i think um, from uh, our research in fact mm -hmm. most of the non-muslims mm -hmm. like engaging themselves with halal business okay. even if you go to this uh, Islamic banks, mm -hmm. you find that non-Muslims, mm -hmm. equally, they are more in those banks than even the Muslims themselves. The aspect of halal, it's about standardization mm -hmm. of businesses mm -hmm. within our co community. Those things which our religion equally doesn't allow to be respected. Because we believe what does not allowed in Quran is what does not allowed in Bible, mm -hmm. according to that. to the non-Muslims also to come in so that they can access loans with either free interest or with mm -hmm. uh, interest which is, uh, we can say it's um, 
in, in, in line with our, with our teachings okay. and all that. Not that abnormal, abnormal interest. Mm -hmm. uh, the aspect of um, interaction, you know, when we do exhibitions, we bring together different families mm -hmm. from different diverse, as you put it. Mm -hmm. So through that, we, we, we get opportunity for our vendors to interact and understand their nature of business, mm -hmm. their nature of family, and their nature of, of life. Thank you so to, much. To I know because because of time, uh, there's still other programs coming up. But we'll just check. one more thing before we close. Uh, briefly, like tell us about tomorrow's program because you, you said you'll be having the 15th edition. Oh yeah, tomorrow we are going to have our 15th edition. Mm -hmm. And um, alhamdulillah, we have gotten over 50 vendors who are going to participate and are already prepared. Mm -hmm. We have done collab with them. We have done shout out. We also in our programs, we, we are starting today by preparing the event mm -hmm. right now. And we also do a road show. Okay. We normally move within South Sea, South B, Nairobi West, just to bring in like um, uh, advertising our event so that we can mm -hmm. have the crowd. And also, we are already prepared to give flyers to the mosques today. Mm -hmm. uh, so preparation is already there, and uh, success to all the vendors who are going to come tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And uh, alhamdulillah, it has been a very successful journey because mm -hmm. we are sticked to one area, that is Kenya Water in South Sea. Wow. Thank you so much. Really glad to have you here. Thanks. And uh, put some insight on what is happening and empowering women on matters of business. You back at home, what are you doing? You have the money, you have the idea of starting a business. Why are you putting these people to waste? So Until next Friday, same place, same time. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.